And we're learning new details about the evidence police say led them to a suspect in the murder of four college students in Idaho. Omar Villafranca has more. Tonight, investigators were seen removing mattresses from the crime scene, loading two of them onto the back of pickup trucks. This, as newly released documents show, police were hot on the trail of the suspect, thanks to a digital web investigator, say, entangled Brian Koberger. Everybody's driving around with a GPS tracker. Mark Roche is a former DOJ cybersecurity expert and says every day people leave a trail of digital debris. People don't realize that when they're using a, any kind of a device, that they're leaving a track of what they're doing. And even if they're just driving in a car, there are automated license plate readers that are capturing their license plate. Investigators say they were able to ID Koberger as the owner of a white Hyundai Elantra that was seen speeding from the crime scene, which then led to his cell phone number. In the affidavit, police say they tracked the criminal justice PhD student through his cell phone, and it pinged off towers near the crime scene at least 12 times before the attack. Police also say they think the suspect could have turned his phone off the morning of the murders, noting that Koberger's device didn't ping cell towers between 2.47 a.m. and 4.48 a.m., saying that is consistent with Koberger attempting to conceal his location during the quadruple homicide. It's much more difficult to get away with these kinds of crimes in 2023 than it was 20, 30 years ago. Omar joins us from Moscow, Idaho. Omar, what more do we know about this surviving roommate's statement in the affidavit? Well, well we know her name, but we're, we're not going to use it. We've decided not to. She's kind of been through enough. But it was interesting because in that affidavit, she was saying that she heard noises. She heard talking. Um, and she went and peeked outside of her door. Uh, it's a home that has multiple rooms in it, and that's where people were saying. And, and she looked in there, and she saw a figure uh, in black with a mask walk past her and that's when she went back into her room and locked the door obviously something that at any age is terrifying so those details are coming out there's been a gag order that's basically put in place a no contact rule uh so you know more will come out as we learn more through the courts what other threads are linking the suspect to the crime scene uh, well, as we mentioned a little bit there in the package, uh, th there was a lot digitally. It was basically a web that was explained in the affidavit that basically they believe tangled the suspect. Uh, everything from there was cameras uh, that they went looking for around the crime scene where that's where they got uh, the white Hyundai. Uh, once they got a, a car and they've had a database to identify the car, they found a license plate that matched people who were nearby. They were able to identify Mr. Koberger and then from there got his cell phone number. Uh, when he was driving back to Pennsylvania, they were tracking him through his toll tag from Washington State all the way back to his home in Pennsylvania. And there in Pennsylvania is where they went to his parents' house and went into the trash and got a DNA sample from there that linked him to DNA left on the sheath of a knife in the room. So uh, a lot of police work being done, and experts are telling us this is pretty common, except it was done here and led to the arrest. Whether it leads to a conviction, that's up to a jury. Omar Villafranca, thank you.